How to Be Orange, Chapter 14, Dutch Honesty Plus Dutch Courage. The quote, People always talk about the Jews in World War II, but the Germans, they were no angels either. Hans Tewin, Cabaretier. Another paradox about the Dutch is their reputation for being tolerant, but also for telling people to do normal, be normal. But the longer I live in the Netherlands, the more I realize what do normal really means. It really does mean you should just be yourself. In fact, if you're too full of yourself or if you're putting on airs, there's a kind of built-in Dutch bullshit detector that will kick in and cut you down to size. Before living in the Netherlands, I spent most of my time living in Chicago and New York. In Chicago, people focus on your past. You're from Missouri? I have a friend from Missouri. Want to hang out? In New York, people focus more on your future. You're from Missouri? I'm from Mississippi. Who cares? Anyway, what's your plan to get rich and famous? Amsterdam, to me, is a mix of Chicago and New York. You want to be rich and famous? Cut the shit. Where are you from? Mississippi? Don't care. Plus, here's my favorite insult about Mississippi. You have sex with your sister. <laughs> Why don't you laugh? I've had this conversation with Dutch people more than once. Hey, I saw you on stage. You are not very funny. Are you really from America? <laughs> I thought so. You're so loud. And you don't know anything about the rest of the world. Hey, you look angry. Uh-oh, are you going to shoot me? You Americans, you're always shooting people. Bang, bang! When I meet Dutch people, it's often as if they want to show off some new truth serum they just drank. Your nose is big. <laughs> Your suit does not fit right. You look Jewish. And this was a quote aimed at a female colleague of mine. You looked really nice on stage tonight. I was looking at your trousers, and I'm pretty sure you shave your pubes, but my friend says you have a full bush. So, which is it? In particular, Dutch honesty and Dutch courage can be a tricky combination. In the days following 9-11, I was here in Amsterdam. A couple of times after I'd do a show, there would be a Dutch guy who wanted to talk to me. He'd say, are you really American? I'd say, yeah. It's terrible what happened in New York. Yeah. Let me buy you a drink. Thanks. We'd get our drinks. Prost. And then he'd say, you know, you Americans really did have it coming. Pfft, I'd spit my beer. Oh, yeah, you had it coming. I mean, who gave the Afghan rebels all their weapons? Ronald Reagan. And who created the Saudi terrorists by propping up that oppressive regime? The Bush family. And the problem was, I agreed with the argument, but I wasn't allowed to say it. Otherwise, they'd have called me a terrorist. In retrospect, I wish there had been more drunk Dutch guys in the Bush White House. Some Dutch people have raised bluntness to an art form. You may have heard of Dutch comedian cabaretier Hans Tewin. If possible, do not get in an argument with Hans Tewin. I learned this lesson the hard way. It's hard to find anyone in the Netherlands who doesn't know at least one Hans Tewin quote. He's celebrated for his irreverent imagination, Nostradamus in his tight green pants, and his embrace of taboo, miming wild sex with Queen Beatrix. In the UK, he's a cult phenomenon, known for his wild stage presence and gleefully politically incorrect material. On stage and off, he is an advocate of free speech, and he practices what he preaches. In 2011, I saw Hans Tewen perform live at the TEDx event in Amsterdam, Stad Schouwburg. Luckily, I knew a bit about him and his act, and I knew what to expect. Much of the crowd, however, had no idea what was coming. Hans Tewen at a TEDx event was rather like putting fireworks in a dirty diaper at a let's keep clean event. Bear in mind, TEDx is a day-long conference with the theme uh, Ideas Worth Spreading. And many of the ideas were about how to make the world a better place. Daywin came on and started by mocking the entire event by covering Michael Jackson. Heal the world, make it a better place, 
for you and for me and for the entire human race. He commented on sustainability by smoking a cigarette on stage and saying, wouldn't it be great if my cigarette could last forever? And then he went on to play the piano. He did a parody of world music, the worst kind of music in the world, he called it. He described most world music as a bunch of Africans chanting. This moment was especially awkward because the act that was on right before him was an African choir. More awkward was that the same choir had to come on again after he was done. I had a chance to speak to Hans Dewin after the TEDx performance to ask him what he thought of it. He said he was just trying to make a point about the hypocrisy of some of these people who talk about saving the planet but are mostly just flogging their own website or book or product. And I asked him, well, is that why you took the gig? You know, to make a point about freedom of speech? And he replied, nah, <laughs> I just did it for the money. To this day, I'm not sure if he was being ironic. And being American, I have to assume it was irony, and I just didn't get it. Now, the day after our conversation, I wrote about this in my blog. I included his quote, nah, I just did it for the money, and I ended there. I thought I'd let the reader judge if he was being ironic or hypocritical. Months later, Hans was developing a new solo show, and I'd heard of this great open mic space for tryouts, so I thought I'd call him up and tell him about it. It was a Sunday, and he picked up right away. He didn't say much, just let me talk. He continued to not say much, and then he broke in. Wait a moment. Mr. Shapiro. Is this the same Mr. Shapiro I spoke to after TEDx? I said yes. Hans continued. I mean, the same Mr. Shapiro who trashed me online after TEDx? My jaw dropped. My testicles retracted. I don't know if it's possible to turn deep red through the phone, but I tried my best. I had no idea. Hans had read my blog. Did anyone? I found myself scrambling to remember what exactly I'd written, but he spelled it out for me. Oh, I know what you were doing, Shapiro. You were just trying to kiss up to the do-gooder crowd. You were trying to make friends with the organizers and kiss their sweet, sweet asses. You thought that by trashing me, you could make a better name for yourself, Shapiro. Well, you didn't think I'd read that shit, did you? But I did. And now you're feeling pretty awkward, aren't you? Aren't you? Clearly, Hans was enjoying himself. I could hear him smile as he spoke. He was on a roll. And even as I cringed in agony, I could tell I'd earned myself a custom-made mini Hans Tewin performance. It was like finding an insult comedian and pissing him off just to hear him rant about you. But then there was silence. I was supposed to speak. Of course, I felt I had to apologize for causing any offense. And then he went off again. Oh, that's easy, isn't it? Now that you have me on the line and you want something from me, now you apologize. <clears throat> Technically, I was offering something to him. And how lame, really, Shapiro. You just roll over like that. Sorry if I offended you. Do you stand by anything you say? Or do you just sell yourself out when it's convenient? Who's the one being a hypocrite now? I concluded the conversation by again offering a tryout space if he needed it. He replied, no, I knew right away I don't need the space. Thanks. I just wanted to make you feel shitty. Okay, bye. Well, bravo. And here I go again. Hans Tewin yelled at me for trashing him online, and now I'm trashing him in a book. Have I learned nothing? Part of me hopes I'll get another custom-made performance by Hans, but I sure hope I get to be the one with a drink in me next time.